Hello. In part 7, we've learned how to load the view components faster in the browser by allowing using the caching. Before we start this part, let's talk about the problem of organizing your view model files. I worked with many development teams in the past. They are all using many different approaches to organize the files related to the view models. Approach number 1. Declare the view model in JavaScript using either JSON objects or JavaScript classes and use this view model only in the JavaScript. The only advantage of this approach is that Visual Studio will recognize all properties and methods declared within those objects and will give you code and tell sense. The main disadvantage is that you will not be able to send these objects back to the server in their native JSON format using an AJAX call or even a simple window.open without having to re-declare the same objects on the server-side code. Approach number 2. Dual Declaration Declare the view model in the back end and use some mechanism to convert that view model into something that JavaScript can use, a JSON object. The advantage is, is that you will have IntelliSense on the client and you'll be able to send any of the objects back to the server. The main disadvantage is that the developer will have to keep these objects always in sync on both sides JavaScript and server-side code. This is a huge maintenance problem for any team, no matter how well organized they are. Another way is to use some third-party add-ons to the Visual Studio, which will automatically create a copy of the server-side class and convert it into a JavaScript class in a separate file. This works only if you don't use TFS for keeping your source control. The problem with TFS is that the read-only file attribute is set to true, so if a file is not explicitly checked out, there is no easy way to modify it from outside Visual Studio or from any Visual Studio add-ons that is not explicitly aware of the TFS source control system. So, any add-on that will potentially transpile a C-sharp or VB class into a JavaScript class will have to be quote-unquote TFS enabled. Approach number 3. Declare the view model only in the back-end classes. The only disadvantage for this approach is that when one is using a view model class in JavaScript, Visual Studio will not have a good IntelliSense. The advantage is that the class is declared only in the back-end and it will be recognized and usable in the back-end and also in JavaScript if the view model will be on the fly converted to a JSON object. Another advantage is that any object declared in the view model can be sent from JavaScript to the server using an AJAX call and the server will automatically convert it into a .NET object. I chose approach number 3 which will spare me the headache of maintaining the same class in two places and it will still give me most of the advantages of declaring the view model in dual mode. In order to use this approach we need the following moving parts. 1. Declare the view model classes in the back end. 2. A real time converter that will convert the .NET objects into JavaScript JSON objects. Because we are creating a view application, this conversion will be done once per opening the page. After that, we are going to use only AJAX to communicate with the server side MVC controllers. So, let's start to convert the current application to follow this approach. Open the application created in the previous parts of this tutorial. Let's open the main app1.js file and analyze the data structure in the main view object. It is comprised of an object named person, which contains two properties, first name and last name. The normal naming convention in a C-sharp class is to use Pascal case for classes, enumerators and all other objects, properties and methods. Also, the normal naming conventions is specifying to use camel case for method parameters. In JavaScript, the naming convention is to always use camel case for anything. It is up to you if you want to use one naming convention or another. For this particular tutorial, I'm going to use camel case for the sake of not having to change too much in the client side code. Now, let's create a view model similar to this one. In the models directory, create a new subdirectory named view models.
Inside the view models subdirectory, create a new class file named person. This class will contain two properties, first name of type string and last name of type string. Make sure the naming convention will be the same used in the current JavaScript implementation. Let's create a parameterized constructor to be able to load the data in the view model easier. Now that we have this class created inside the view models directory, create a new class named main app view model 1.cs. In this class, add a new property of type person named person also following the same camel case naming convention. Add a constructor which will populate the person property with a new person. Open the home controller file and inside the index method add the code to initialize the view model. In order to convert the C-sharp class into a JSON, we have to create a new HTML helper. So, inside the models directory, open the helpers class and add these two new methods to the class. Change this class to a static class. These methods will serialize any C# -sharp class into a JSON string that can be used inside the JavaScript. Now open the index.cshtml file and write before the first helpers load file add a script tag. Inside that script tag, declare a new JavaScript variable named viewmodel and assign to it the following code. Open the main app 1.js file and change the data property to point to the new JavaScript variable. Save all files. Let's run the application. Now, the view model will not be declared in JavaScript anymore. It will be declared only in the back end and the person JSON object can be submitted with an Ajax call to the back end. If you need to modify the view model by adding, removing or renaming any class or property, you will do it in the back end code. Because the JavaScript and backend code are two separate environments when you modify the view model, make sure that you also modify the JavaScript code using it.
Please come back for more tips and tricks related to view with Visual Studio. Thank you for watching.